welcome to another edition of Force Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. How can you not be excited about a stacked up day of graded stakes racing at Aqueduct? December at the Big A, Matt, and you're excited? Oh, absolutely. Good, good, Matt. It is a great day of racing at Aqueduct, and that's where our focus will be this week, folks. The Big A, and, and, and Matt's excited about it. He's uh, probably going to be at Aqueduct this weekend. Matt, we're going to start with the big one, the $750,000. I think it's the last grade one of the year out in New York. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely is. The Cigar Mile. Obviously, it's one mile, folks. I mean, it, it, I think it's drawn a nice little field here, Matt. Uh, eight horses. Most of them are interesting. I'm not sure if all of them can win, but I, I would venture to say that at least all eight are interesting horses. Yeah, it's an interesting collection in this field. And of course, you know, it, it, it's got the feature that makes these big grade one, one turn mile races so interesting to watch it to handicap. You've got the the shorter sprinters stretching out to a mile. You've got the two turn horses cutting back a little bit in distance and going the one turn. That combination as we uh, get a certainly get a taste of in June with the Met Mile in New York it is a fascinating one. Yeah, a completely different track here at Aqueduct than at Belmont for that Met Mile or the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Where we, this year it was at Del Mar. Uh, Aqueduct can be a, a, a tricky track, and uh, I, I think there is a nice collection, as Matt says, of sprinters versus horses who are used to running farther. I also think there's quite a bit of speed in here, Matt. Let's jump right in. I think the favorite off that big win came on a sloppy track, but it was a big win in the Fayette. That's Independence Hall. Michael McCarthy has him uh, looking like he's in the best form of his career. Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, boy, I remember Independence Hall back when uh, he ran at Aqueduct, and, and we should certainly note that he has two wins in two starts at Aqueduct. Both of those were in one-turn miles. Of course, they were for his original trainer, Michael Trombetta, um, but I remember him. One of those was as a two-year-old. Uh, the other one was as a three-year-old, and he was one nutsy horse uh, uh, in the paddock, but certainly has settled down with age, um, has uh, uh, done some really nice racing for his new trainer, Michael McCarthy, and that performance in the Fayette, that fast front end performance was very impressive. It was very impressive. He went wire to wire that day, which is not his normal uh, uh, MO, Matt, but uh, sloppy track. He got out to the lead and he really rolled and he beat uh, a decent field, including Code of Honor, who's in the race. Mm -hmm. And before that, I have a whole lot more respect for that Lucas Classic where he chased uh, uh, Nick's go around the track at Churchill Downs. Uh, clearly second best that day. And, and we all know what Nick's go uh, came back and did in the Breeders' Cup Classic. So Independence Hall going good. I don't think he'll be on the lead like he was in the Fayette. Uh, Javier uh, Castellano will be in the saddle mat, uh, a legitimate favorite, but not a favorite that I, I, I you know, I, I think is uh, near unbeatable. I, I think there's lots of good options. Maybe the next horse we'll look at is another horse who has good tactical speed. This one's coming from California, Matt. I'm talking about Ginobili, the son of Munnings. Yeah, and he's turned things around in his uh, last three starts since he added blinkers on for uh, trainer Richard Baltus. I often think of Baltus as doing particularly well uh, on the turf, but uh, uh, he's got Ginobili uh, doing the right things. Uh, blinkers went on. He had a big allowance win at Del Mar. Then he won the Pat O'Brien uh, at Del Mar, which is seven furlongs. And of course, we saw him most recently uh, in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, where you talked about Independence Hall chasing uh, Nick's go, Ginobili was chasing Life is Good. Yeah, yeah Life is Good is, uh, is, uh, is a hard horse to chase, and we saw how good he was in that Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Ginobili was second best in there, much like Independence Hall as you mentioned in the Lucas Classic. Uh, I will say, you know, the first thing we might look at with Ginobili is blinkers on three starts ago, because his last three starts, 
are so good, too good to be ignored. And I think off those three th starts, two of them at the one mile distance of, of the cigar mile. Uh, I almost feel like Ginobili is the horse to beat off of those three races. But there's more than just the blinkers there, Matt. There's also, uh, there's also the Delmar factor, because if you look at his career going back to very, very early on, all of his career victories, which total three, but all of them are at Del Mar. And, and uh, of course, the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile wasn't a victory. So we're looking at all of this horse's best races are at Del Mar, even going back to uh, his uh, juvenile year. So I think it's a question mark for me whether this horse can bring that really, really good form. Even that allowance race at a mile was awesome. The Pat O'Brien where he beat CZ Rocket and uh, Flagstaff easily. And then uh, a, a, nice, uh, a nice second behind life is good. They all came at Del Mar. Very different track, Matt, as you know, Aqua to Del Mar. Yeah, and, you know, in support of Ginobili, I can say, and, and I certainly don't know if any of this is, trans, is going to translate, but we have seen New York horses go out to Del Mar and run well on that Del Mar surface. Is it going to translate the other way for Ginobili going from the Del Mar track to, uh, to the surface at Aqueduct? I don't know, but I guess that's a way of supporting him. He's never traveled uh, uh, all the way to the East Coast. Um, so that's going to be a big factor uh, for Ginobili. Yeah, it is. And, and we already know Independence Hall can uh, do, do okay, do really well at Aqueduct. So maybe that's an advantage. I also think Ginobili might show a little bit more speed than Independence Hall, even though Independence Hall wired that they at last time. It, it seems like Ginobili is very adapt at staying close to fast fractions. Uh, he, he did it a little bit in the dirt mile, but especially two starts back in that seven furlong Pat O'Brien out there at Del Mar. All right, Matt, maybe horses coming from off the pace a little bit we can talk about. Uh, certainly uh, uh, Code of Honor is a horse that we've known for a long time. We just said that he was second, a distant second behind Independence Hall. But uh, I tell you what, looking at that race, second early on, pretty close second early on on a sloppy track at Keeneland chasing Independence Hall. I, I don't think that in any shape or form is Code of Honor's game. And we're going to talk more about the speed in this race. I think Code of Honor might get a setup that he hasn't seen in a while and that he did pretty well back in the day when he was winning grade ones where he was coming from off the pace. Yeah, back in the day, I think is a good point with uh, Code of Honor because he had that terrific uh, streak uh, when he was younger. Um, and, you know, we, we saw him on the Kentucky Derby Trail back in the day, as you said. He's by far, Brian, the leading money winner in this field with almost three million in earnings. He, he's got a million dollars more of earnings than the second closest uh uh, earner in this field. Um, but, you know, for me, uh, I'm just not sure if age has caught up with Code of Honor a little bit. I had heard that the Fayette was going to be his final start of his career, but here he is back again. And I guess the Cigar Mile will be his last race. Uh, that's that's not determined yet, Matt. Uh, Shug McGahey saying that, uh, yes, Code of Honor will enter stud, of course, next year in 2022. But he's doing so well that he wants to uh, he wants to run him, and uh, this may not be his final race. So we shall see. I, I think that's somewhat of a good sign that Chuck McGahey, the Hall of Fame trainer, thinks that his horse is doing really well and wants to get another start or two out of him before he does go off to stud. Uh, you're you're right. He was not the horse. It's not the horse that he once was when he won the Travers and the Dwyer and the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Got put up to second in the Kentucky Derby. Mm -hmm. But I, I still think he's a very good horse, and uh, I'm interested in the pace setup in here. Another horse I'm interested in the pace setup is American Revolution, because he's a horse who can come off from off the pace. Now, the problem with American Revolution in, in all three of his stakes wins, where he did come from a little bit off the lead, uh, and I think that's going to be a good thing as he cuts back to a mile here in, in a speedy cigar mile is uh, they came against New York Brits. He, he absolutely dominated races like the Empire Classic, the Albany, the New York Derby, but they're against New York Brits. So you just don't know what he's gonna do against grade one horses and open company. Uh, however, we do have a little bit of a clue because he ran in the Pennsylvania Derby, Matt, a good field, a pretty deep field 
The top two, of course, were Hot Rod Charlie and Midnight Bourbon, but American Revolution was clearly third best in that $1 million Pennsylvania Derby. Yeah, and, and that is certainly uh, nothing to uh, sneeze at when you talk about uh, running third in that Pennsylvania Derby behind the likes of Hot Rod Charlie and Midnight Bourbon, who did who had so many uh, excellent performances uh, amongst the three-year-olds this year. And yes, those wins were against uh, New York Reds, but he put a whooping on those New York Reds, Brian, in those races. Big, big open length victories. Clearly a horse that Todd Pletcher is excited about, uh, a horse that has some upside. But yes, of course, he's got a lot to prove in this uh, in this field of, of, with older horses and uh, uh, some talented runners. Absolutely. And uh, two starts removed from that Pennsylvania Derby third place effort. He too, like Independence Hall, comes off a sloppy track win. His was by a pole when he won that Empire Classic over older horses. But now he faces a much tougher test, as Matt uh, alluded to here in the Cigar Mile. He's the first three-year-old that we're talking about, Matt. He's also the first from Todd Petcher we're talking about. But there are more three-year-olds in the race, and there's another Todd Petcher in the race. An interesting three-year-old. And his name is Following C. And if you've been following the sport lately, you know how good Following C has been in his last two races, Matt Shipman. Yeah, absolutely. Following C, uh, uh, I, I would say, you know, even uh, even in his uh, last three races, Brian, I would go so as, as far as to say uh, in those three races, he has been running against very, very strong fields. The most recent being that Breeders' Cup uh, sprint where he finished third, um, ran into some traffic trouble in the stretch. Johnny V, uh, you know, has said that he really felt like following C had a good shot to win that race, were it not for uh, the traffic trouble. Uh, before that, he won uh, the Vosburg uh, uh, very impressively. And then before that, he was in the Jerkins uh, during the summer. Uh, yeah, he ran third, but it was against Jackie's Warrior and Life is Good. Those were three really quality fields um, and, and that absolutely measure up with the, the field in Cigar Mile. I'll, I'll agree with you to a point. At least two of those three fields match up with the Cigar Mile. The, the Vosburgh was impressive and he beat Forensic Fire pretty nicely. But other than that, I don't know if, if we can say the Vosburgh matches up with the Cigar Mile because I think the Cigar Mile is a, is a legitimate grade one race. And, and following C was beaten nearly 10 lengths in the Jerkins Memorial by those really, really super horses. Jackie's Warrior and Life is Good. Uh, hey, I, I can't say too much negative about the Vosburg nor the Breeders' Cup Sprint. Uh, as you said, there was a little traffic for him in that Breeders' Cup Sprint. He got beat less than two lengths uh, by Aloha West and Dr. Shivel in there. So it was a really nice performance going out to California. Got to like his last two races, but they're sprinting. They're six furlongs, uh, nine furlongs. He really didn't look good in the Haskell. Uh, I worry that maybe six furlongs is more his game, or at least that's what I've seen so far than a mile, but on the other hand, his form in the last two is, is really hard to deny. Yeah, and, and you know, the Haskell, that's a mile and an eighth, that's two turns. That's a whole different ball game. Uh, you know, he, he's gonna be breaking from the rail in here. Uh, I think he's got, he certainly has the speed to get himself in good position. Uh, this is a horse to me that, you know, I don't know if we've seen his absolute best yet. and. Uh, We'll get some pretty good odds. Yeah, and we'll probably say that about both Pletcher three-year-olds. I, I don't know that we've seen their best yet. Uh, you're right. I think following C will be uh, the fifth choice in here probably, and I think he'll be higher than Pletcher's other three-year-olds. So an interesting horse for sure. The other three horses in the race, I'm just going to run, run them down real quick. Olympiad, Pipeline, and Plainsman. Plainsman ran a really nice ack act two starts back for trainer Brad Cox at a mile at Churchill Downs. Uh, he's a six-year-old veteran. I don't know if he's good enough to, to win a race like the great one cigar mile, but you know, you throw out the last race, which was on slop, maybe he's an interesting long shot. The other two, Olympiad for Bill Mott and Pipeline for uh, uh, Chad Brown are interesting young horses. They are interesting young horses, certainly uh, uh, looking for their first uh, stakes victories and, and, and 
trying to do that in a field like the uh, Cigar Mile is certainly a tough ask. Uh, you know, I also feel that uh, Plainsman is an interesting long shot with a chance to maybe sneak into the trifecta at uh, a good price. Yeah, possibly. And and I'm I'm pretty high in Olympiad moving forward. And the and the fact that Bill Mott, uh, who's not a who is not a trainer who usually puts his horses into really difficult spots early in their career. I mean, this is a horse who's only run four times in his life, and only two this year. He had a full year off. He looked like a really good two-year-old when he beat a bunch of future great uh, graded stakes winners last fall as a two-year-old. Then he had a full year off came back second in a crazy fast uh, baby Yoda sprint at Saratoga. And then he won a real game, uh, a brave victory at Keeneland in a pretty fast seven furlongs there. So Olympiad is a horse I'm looking for in the future, but uh, probably not on Saturday in this field in the Cigar Mile. Matt, uh, we've run down the field here, this eight horse field for the Cigar Mile. I wanna know who your top pick is. I'm going to go for a little bit of a price in here, Brian. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, following C on top, and my second choice is Independence Hall. Oh, interesting. Following C, okay. Following C has been so good his last two races, but here's, yeah, I think Pipeline is going to show speed. I think Ginobili is going to pressure early. I, I think Independence Hall is going to be going after the lead in the American Revolution, not too far behind him. So, I think it's a tough spot for a horse. I'm not sure wants a mile, but I, I, I think that's an interesting pick. I'm going the other way. I'm going with the other Pletcher three-year-old now. I think American Revolution sits the trip, and I think he's kind of on a perfect progression to a, 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 an early December big race because I think he's been getting better literally all summer and fall. American Revolution, I, I was really impressed with his Penn Derby when he ran third off of basically never facing good horses before. I think that experience will do him well. And I think he can sit in the middle of the pack and make a move in here. So uh, Matt and I are both on Pletcher three-year-olds, just different Pletcher three-year-olds. Uh, Code of Honor, I think we'll rally and run a good race. Independence Hall, I'm going to go Code of Honor as my second pick, Matt. So we're, uh, we're completely different there, but we're both on Pletcher three-year-olds. We'll go to the two-year-olds because we want to see some Kentucky Derby possibles here, Matt. Next with the Remsen, it's it's a quarter million dollars. It's nine furlongs, big first big race for nine furlongs. And uh, we've had some Remsen winners that have gone on or Remsen horses that have gone on to good things in, in the past few years. Uh, might this be another one? Uh, we got some interesting maiden winners, at least in a field that doesn't look too distinguished yet. Yeah, I agree, Brian. Certainly a field of horses uh, uh, with uh, not a lot of experience. Uh, as you mentioned, some uh, recent maiden winners. Um, so we'll have to see. And, you know, over in recent years, we've certainly seen some interesting performances uh, in the Remsen as these young horses stretch out to nine furlongs on that aqueduct racing surface. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what, I, I, think the, I, I think it's a difficult race to pinpoint a favorite, but I think the favorite is going to be the Todd Pletcher train Mo Donegal. And uh, I, up, up until recently, I thought Pletcher was going to have two of the favorites in the Remsen, but he decided to go with Mo Donegal only. I don't know if that was a decision uh, forced upon him or if he decided that Mo Donegal is his horse in here. But this is on Uncle Mo, who has looked good in two starts. He, he slow start, uh, maybe a little bit of trouble in a six furlong debut where he rallied nicely for third. Then he was a very good winner uh, against uh, probably some decent horses in his second start. Yeah, and, and Mo Donical was well thought of un enough to be included in the Kentucky Derby Future Pool number one that uh, closed last weekend. He ended up with odds of 37 to one, um, certainly uh, uh, shows a lot of promise. Those slow starts concern me a little bit, though, Brian. Yeah. Me too, Matt. Even at nine furlongs, I worry about horses getting too far out of this kind of race because I don't know if it's going to be a race where you can really make up a lot of ground in the stretch in this nine furlong ramps and for these inexperienced horses. But Mo Donegal has looked good. He improved from second to first start. It's been a few years since Donegal's had some derby horses. They had some good derby contenders in uh, Patio Prado and, and Doolahan over the years. But it's been a few years since we've seen Jerry Crawford's Donegal racing with a real derby contender, maybe Mo Donegal will become one with a win in the Remsen. 
The, the horse, I think, that uh, also could be favored or will vie for favoritism with the Pletcher trained Mo Donegal mod is the Chad Brown trained Zandon. Zandon, Zandon, son of Upstart, looked good in his debut. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, uh, was five to one in his debut, going six furlongs, um, and was an impressive winner for uh, Chad Brown. Impressive enough, again, for him to be included in that first Kentucky Derby future wager pool, where he, where you could have gotten him at uh, odds of fifty-six to one. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think obviously we're not going to get a price like that. He's going to be certainly a short price uh, down there with uh, Mo Donegal because it's Chad Brown in New York. So, you know, he's going to get bet heavily. Yeah. Yeah. I think those are the two favorites and, I, and I'm not sure what to make of Sandon. Uh, the, the maiden win was good. It was six furlongs and uh, a six furlong debut to the nine furlong Remsen. Uh, that's questionable. I, I wonder, I wonder if he's going to be at his best at nine furlongs already, but Chad Brown certainly knows how to do this sort of thing. Um, the fact that Mo Donegal was preferred in the Kentucky Derby future pool made, made me name Mo Donegal as the favorite in here, but I think both will get that and both are interesting prospects if they can move forward and we see something good out of those. Uh, out of the rest, Matt, I, I think there's interesting horses, but uh, uh, certainly that no one jumps off the page as a real proven great uh, stakes horse or as a horse with super potential. Judd da Judge Davis, I imagine, will be the third choice, uh, trained by Shug McGahey, son of distorted humor. Uh, he was third in the mud last time. Uh, I'm sorry, he was third in the uh, Nashua last time after winning his maiden in the mud. Yeah, that's that, absolutely, Brian, um, for, for Suge, um, and that's a good thing, um, you know, uh, that maiden win on the mud, and third in the Nashua, uh, I just wasn't wowed by either of those performances, so, um, you know, I'll probably look elsewhere. Yeah, looking elsewhere, and Judge Davis, we mentioned the speed, uh, Zippo, Mo Donegal, and Zandon probably want to rally. Maybe Zandon chose more speed at nine furlongs, but Judge Davis could be ahead of them early, and I, I think he's a threat in here. Uh, from another mother, uh, son of Unified, Matt, uh, is still a maiden, but he's run enough good races, at least recently, to get a shot here in the Remsen. Uh, is, he, uh, is he one of the ones that you're looking at? Well, he comes from the barn of a good young trainer in Ray Handel, but like you said, Brian, uh, uh, four tries in maiden special weights already. He's got a second, a second, and a third. Makes me hard to think that he's going to break through to the winner's circle uh, in the Remsen. Is there anybody else you like, sir? Um, I, you know, Brian, I'm, I'm leaning to the, the top two that we mentioned in this race. I think, uh, uh, you know, we, we've got some trainers who have done well shipping into uh, Aqueduct before, Butch Reed in particular with, uh, with Eloquist. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, his win came at Parks in a maiden special weight in a small field. Um, he'd be a big upset in there, but, you know, uh, Butch Reed's a good, uh, good conditioner. Yeah, I can't throw out Eloquist in here. I, I just think there's opportunity because you got the two clear favorites both coming off Baden wins. I think there is opportunity for an upset. I'm not sure who it's going to be. Maybe I'll pick a long shot, but Eloquist, uh, Eloquist is in with a shot. Uh, here we are where we're, it's time to pick a, a horse, and it sounds like you're going to give me one of the two favorites, I think, on top. Yeah, my top pick is going to be Zandon for Chad Brown. Zandon for Chopper. I'm not sure about Upstart. You know, I want to like Upstart as a sire. Yeah. He was a good looking horse and he ran some good races and he's had a, a lot of decent looking horses, but I'm not sure what they want yet. Do they want to stretch out or, or are they horses that are just going to be nice grade three types at, at a mile or a mile 16th? So it'll be interesting to see if Zandon is, uh, is a horse that could make Upstart uh, look more like a mile and a quarter sire. We'll see. Mo Donegal, I, I think, is tough, too. In fact, I'm, I'm going to put Mo Donegal as my second pick, and it sounds like he's your second pick as well. My top pick is going to be a bomb. I'm trying for an upset. I, I think this is a race that we could see something happen, and uh, we haven't mentioned him yet. His name is Mr. Jefferson. Uh, he comes from the uh, Mike Trump Battle Barn, and he's been running in Virginia and Maryland. So uh, he's going up in class, but I wonder how classy this grade two Remsen is. 
Son of Constitution is two for two on dirt. I, lo- I like the way he's been running his last two. Eliquist, uh, you mentioned him. You know, he, he's been running up against a horse called Smart Up, who, who recently won by about nine lengths uh, recently. So I could even see Eliquist running a big race. But I'm going to go with Mr. Jefferson as a, as a long shot winner of this Remsen map. That's two down. Folks, I want to remind you, please do subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel here on Horse Racing Nation. Matt and I sure do appreciate it. Turn on those notifications so you never miss another episode of Horse Center. We did the Cigar Mile. We did the Remsen Matt. How about one more from the Big A? Are you up for it? Let's go. Let's do the Phillies. Let's do the Phillies. We want to talk Kentucky Oaks contenders. And I'm I'm slightly more confident that there could be a Kentucky Oaks contender in the Demoiselle, Matt, than I am the Remsen providing a real Kentucky Derby contender. Also nine furlongs, also a quarter of a million dollars on this great Saturday card at Aqueduct, Matt. I guess we start with the horses coming out of the Tempted because both Magic Circle and Ness were close when they ran second and third in that recent stakes race in New York. Yeah, and that gives them a little bit of seasoning that some of these other horses, uh, these other horses don't have. Nest, a Todd Pletcher, another Kerwin Philly, Brian, and we know how well those Kerwin Phillies uh, have done in the last few years on the on the road to the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, Etc. He was a debut, uh, sh- excuse me, she was a debut winner by five lengths at uh, Belmont as an odds on favorite and then was third in the tempted, but only three quarters of a length from the top spot. Uh, magic circle for Rudy Rodriguez, who uh, uh, has a way of sneaking in and winning some big races um, at Aqueduct, uh, was a debut winner at uh, Saratoga. Uh, came back and was fourth in the Frisette grade one and second in the tempted. So that's some, that's some strong stakes experience that should serve her well. Yeah. And we usually, you're right. We usually do see Rudy Rodriguez at these, uh, this time of year at Aqueduct. I mean, we see him all year, but he usually pops up with some interesting two-year-olds this time of year. So certainly a Philly magic circle, I think could uh, surprise. And she's, I guess it would be less of a surprise now, but she, if you look at her odds, you've just been playing her to win or even putting her underneath in some of these races. Uh, she's continued to outrun her odds magic circle for Rudy Rodriguez. And it's the daughter of Cantheros. So I'm uh, uh, a little dubious about the nine furlongs, the two turns of the Demoiselle, but uh, uh, obviously you can't throw her out the way she's running, outrunning her odds. I, I like the horse that she beat last time, though, better nest. Nest, as you said, a very well-bred daughter of Curlin for trainer Todd Fletcher. Uh, I think Nest is uh, coming up to this demoiselle in the right way because she's had two races as opposed to a couple of horses we're about to talk about. And the uh, first one was a very nice win at a mile 16th. She shortened up for the Tempted, which was a, a one-turn mile. And uh, she was coming late. She was really gaining ground late to be third by three quarters of a length. So I, I like Nest of the two out of there, but I think betters my uh, agree with me and prefer Nest out of the two from the Tempted. But then we got to talk about two horses who kind of different ways, different uh, different looking races at least, but both well-bred and both were big debut winners. Uh, let's start with Tap the Faith Knot, who's a really well-bred daughter of Tap It. She won more recently and she did it for trainer Christophe Clement. Yes, indeed she did. Uh, won her debut at Belmont Park, uh, six to one with a nice... Uh, rail trip. Um, Clement is very good um, with first timers. Um, And uh, as we know with Tappets, uh, they they get better and better with experience. Yeah, yeah. I like the breeding on top of the faith as I like the breeding on Nest. And uh, she got up late on on the inside, as Matt said. That was a nice photo win, but she won by a head. uh, And and I liked what I saw in there. Uh, Nostalgic, you have to go back a little farther. Nostalgic hasn't run as recently as Tap the Faith, but she was a very impressive winner. Uh, it's a daughter of Medagliadora, another well-bred horse. Of course, this one is a Godolphin homebred, not uh, Bill Ma trains her, and she won uh, for fun. It wasn't a real fast time. It wasn't, wasn't a very fast time at all when she won, but she won easily. Yeah, it was not a really fast time. Uh, and as you mentioned, it came at the uh, end of October, but it was for Bill Mott and Bill Mott is not known for having uh, first timers uh, cranked up. And uh, uh, to me, 
This is a horse that could uh, improve a great deal off of what was a very easy win down the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it reminded me just a little bit. I don't know if you're going to remember this, Matt. I'm getting a little nostalgic here, no pun intended. But I, I remember sitting with you in the press box and watching a first timer uh, for Bill Mott, a Philly uh, uh, run away from the field. Her name was Royal Delta. So I'm going back a few years. Do you remember that, Matt? Oh, absolutely, Brian. Yeah. And I, hey, could nostalgic be another Royal Delta? I guess, I guess we'll have to wait and see till Saturday afternoon. Yeah. And, you know, certainly, as you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, with that uh, Godolphin uh, blood, uh, you know that uh, good breeding on the top and the bottom. Absolutely. I, I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't find as enough reason to go against the favorites in the Demozel as I could in the Remsen. So I'm not going to pick a bomb in here, Matt. In fact, those are the four that I think the race really boils down to. How about you? Yeah, I agree with you, Brian. All right. Well, who is your top pick in this demo, Zell? Well, I'm going to, I think I'm going to avoid the favorites and, and we'll see how much uh, nostalgia gets, gets bet in the race, but I'm going to take a shot with Bill Mott. Take a shot with Bill Mott. I like it. It rhymes. I, I, I'm not sure if she won't be the favorite, um, but I, I guess she won't. I think you're right, but I, I think she'll be one of the four bad. I think she's probably going to get bet more than the Rudy Rod, but maybe the favorite is Nest. I don't know. Top to Faith look good getting up. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this race is bet. She's a good top pick. Uh, I'm going to go with Nest, though, and I, I like the advantage, Matt, of having two races as opposed to one. I think Ness didn't want the one turn mile of the tempted. I think she gets two turns. I know she gets two turns, but I think she'll like the two turns. She sees an aqueduct on Saturday. Hey, this is a full sister to Idol. Idol's a really good four-year-old, of course, who won the big cap this year. So this is one well-bred filly. She looked great in her debut. I think she's better than she showed the tempted when she got beat narrowly. Ness will be my top pick in here, but both of those second time starters are dangerous as, as Matt clearly knows. All right, folks, that's our uh, uh, show for uh, a big day at the big A. We got the Cigar Mile, the runs in the Demoiselle. I think they're running the Gopher Wands as well on Saturday, Matt. Should be fun. Are you gonna be there, sir? I am, I, I'm trying to work it out, but there we are. Four graded stakes races to end the 10 race cards, races seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, at the beginning of December, that's pretty good racing. Absolutely. I like when tracks uh, line them all up there at the end, too. That's fun. Matt, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Absolutely, Brian. Again, I want to thank everybody for watching Horse Center. Uh, um, good luck this weekend. And, of course, I want to thank our producer, Ben Wilkie, for putting together the show. All right. Thanks to Matt. Thanks to Ben. Thanks to Candace Curtis for putting the race graphics together. Thanks to our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars, folks. Uh, I also want to thank you for tuning in every week, Matt. And I couldn't do the show without you. Next week, we will be back talking about more Kentucky Derby possible horses as we go out to Los Alamitos for their big futurity. We will see you right here next week on Horse Center.